Mm. There are no words. There are no words. And I, yeah, I said there were no words and I keep talking, so that's it. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another video. Today's video is very kindly sponsored by iHerb and today I want to show you guys some really easy light spring recipes since the weather is getting warmer so you probably want some delicious and light and healthy recipes so I'm super excited to show you guys some deliciousness. So as I mentioned today's video is sponsored by iHerb. So if you guys haven't heard of iHerb, they're an online store specializing in natural products. They've got over 30,000 natural and healthy products on their website and of course tons of vegan options as well they sell all kinds of things grocery items they've got supplements beauty products skincare products home products so so many things I've actually been shopping with them for many years and I still use them regularly to this day so it is awesome and they ship to over 180 countries worldwide if you guys want to check if they ship to your country you can actually go to iherb.com slash shipping and they also ship from climate controlled distribution centers and they also have 24-hour customer service in 10 different languages so it's awesome you guys definitely definitely check them out I'm gonna be using a bunch of products from their website to make some of my recipes and at the end I'm also gonna show you guys a few different fun little items that I got that I'm excited to use as well so yes let's jump right into our spring recipe number one all right guys so for the first recipe I'm gonna make some energy balls but we're gonna be using something that I'm very excited to try which is green banana flower have you guys heard of this because i just heard about this green banana flower how cool okay i don't know how people come up with this stuff but i thought it sounded really cool so i'm going to experiment with a few different recipes for this so today i want to make some energy balls and you don't have to bake these which is really cool so it's going to be like a non-bake very easy just put it all in one bowl type of recipe so super exciting so let's just put it all together we just need a few ingredients and then that's it so it'll make a really easy snack so first ingredient I'm actually going to use is going to be some vegan chocolate chips. So I'm just gonna be using this one right here from Enjoy Life. A lot of chocolate chips happen to be like accidentally vegan. You just have to check the ingredients list, but this one is definitely vegan and it's allergy friendly, which is really, really convenient. So we're gonna use that. So we're gonna use three tablespoons of chocolate chips and I kinda wanna melt it. So not I kinda wanna melt it, I wanna melt it. I'm gonna roughly just measure out three tablespoons of chocolate chips. I'm just gonna melt it slightly. So I'm just gonna throw it into the microwave. I'm gonna start with 15 seconds. Okay. You wanna do increments, maybe like 15, 20 second increments. Apparently 15 seconds did nothing, which is kinda weird. Maybe it's one of those things, I feel like my dish is like soaking up all the heat. It's gonna be really hot, isn't it? I don't know. Okay. Okay guys, so um, it's melted pretty well. I think this is good enough. Yeah, I had to, you know, do a bit longer than 15 seconds for sure. But basically just melt it in, you know, 15, 20 second increments. Get it all nice and melted. Ooh, la la. Let's continue. So then we have three tablespoons of this green banana flour. Okay, confession guys, I'm just kind of taking the recipe in the back and then I'm altering it. So it's easier and I don't know. I feel like it's gonna be better. <laughs> we'll find out. Okay, so we're gonna do three tablespoons of this green banana flour. It's supposed to be healthier than like regular flour, but who knows, okay? And then we wanna do some tahini. Tahini, you can also use other nut butters if you want. But look at this creamy tahini. Okay, so we're gonna do three tablespoons of tahini. Healthy fats, yum. All right, and the next ingredient, we're gonna add some maple syrup or agave nectar. I just have three tablespoons of that. Super simple to remember, guys. Three tablespoons of basically like everything. <laughs> so it is gonna be thick, so don't you worry. It'll be fine. And you could probably bake these two, but we're being lazy today, so. Look at that. Kinda wanna try it. Mmm, so good, my friends. So you can finish it like this and make it into balls, but I also wanna add some crunch. Oh my God, that's so good. It's like a brownie. I'm gonna call these brownie bites. There you go, brownie bites. Okay, so you can just like literally make these into balls or you could also add some walnuts. I'm just gonna take like maybe a quarter cup of walnuts 
and then just slightly chop into smaller pieces and then just add that in but you guys it kind of tastes like a really delicious brownie that you don't have to bake we're going to add this in it does get really really thick but you'll be fine you'll make it through all right guys, so now we're going to make these into little balls, which is very easy to do. It's kind of nice and greasy from all the fat from the tahini. So we're gonna keep it super simple. We're just gonna make these into little balls and you can honestly just enjoy it. You can also make them into little cookie shapes if you want. All right guys, so that's pretty much it. So all you wanna do is just refrigerate it and make it nice and cold and enjoy it throughout the week. You can put these in a nice like little Tupperware. Um, I'm actually gonna try one right now because why not, okay? So let's try one of these bad boys. It's so good. Definitely would be even better when it's refrigerated. Mmm. Seriously, like a brownie. Really fudgy, thick. Mm. Mm. I'm amazed. Mm. So easy, guys. Literally, I think it was five ingredients. If you don't have walnuts, it's four ingredients. Four ingredients. So easy, so simple. Put it in the fridge, enjoy it throughout the week. So that was delicious. I had to like physically remove myself so that I don't eat all of the energy balls at once or the brownie balls. Okay, so we're gonna do the second recipe, which is going to be a savory recipe, of course. I really want to make like a wild rice mushroom sort of dish. I went through a lot of versions of this in my head and hopefully this will work out. Let's see, okay? So first, of course, we need some mushrooms. I have here about two cups of mushrooms. I'm just gonna chop them very quickly. It's gonna take like two seconds, okay? It's not very difficult. You don't have to make them like super pretty. We're just gonna cook them up. So there's something weirdly satisfying also about chopping mushrooms. I don't know what it is. I think it's because they chop so easily. So to me, it's like kind of satisfying. I don't know, am I the only one? Maybe. All right. Okay, so you can chop them more finely if you'd like, but I'm just gonna keep it like this. All right guys, so now I have a big pan. We're gonna keep this like one pan recipe to keep it really easy and simple. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil on the pan. I'm just gonna use this spray thing, okay? Just a little bit, okay? You don't need a lot. And then I'm just going to cook the mushrooms. There you go. So what I want to do is like I want to kind of like brown the mushrooms a little bit so that, you know, they kind of release the mushroom aroma, if you will. Um, oh, you know what? I'm going to actually add some garlic as well. So one little garlic hack that I use literally all the time is basically you just throw a bunch of garlic, peeled garlic into the food processor and then you process it and then you have minced garlic for like so long. This is how I always have minced garlic because I hate, hate chopping up garlic, but I love garlic. Anyways, so I'm going to add like a generous amount, maybe like a tablespoon of garlic with the mushrooms. Let's add a little splash of water. Oh, while that's cooking, I'm gonna prepare the wild rice. And by prepare, I mean measure it out. So we're using this wild rice right here. You can use like a mixed, like wild rice mix, which is like mixed with other types of rice. This one is like pure wild rice. Okay, so we're gonna do a cup of wild rice. Let's, oh my god, why am I not able to do this? Ah. Ah. Ooh la la. All right. Here's a full cup of wild rice. And I just want to make sure, I think I added way too much water because I really wanted to brown the mushrooms. So as you can see, the mushrooms are releasing a lot of water. So I think I added a little too much um, water perhaps to the mushrooms, okay. I just meant to add like a small splash and you know what? I am once again being very impatient. So I'm just gonna add the wild rice. Woo! Ooh, it smells lovely. So, for one cup of wild rice, I need three cups of water. Okay, so we're gonna do two cups of water. Oh, 
and another cup. Okay, so you wanna do three cups of water for one cup of wild rice. So we're just gonna let this cook, okay? So I'm just gonna give this a little very gentle stir. Okay, so I'm gonna let this come to a nice boil and then once it comes to a boil, I'm going to cover it up and then let it cook for about 40, 45 minutes, whenever it's done, okay? That's what we're gonna do, so let's let that cook. So while the mixture is cooking, I'm gonna make the really easy dressing, okay? I kinda wanna keep it super simple, and um, yeah. So we're gonna use a tahini once again. Tahini is fantastic, it makes a delicious creamy uh, sauce dressing, and as I mentioned, you can, you can use it in sweet recipes, you can use it in savory recipes, I just love it so much, so. We're gonna use that. We're also gonna use some lemon, okay? We're gonna use some lemon. We're also gonna use some coconut aminos. If you guys don't know, coconut aminos is like one of my favorite condiments. It's basically like a sweet soy sauce, but without the soy, without the gluten, if you are gluten-free, coconut aminos is amazing. Even though I'm not gluten-free, I use it all the time. And it's just easier sometimes than soy sauce because I don't have to add any sweetener to it sometimes um, because it already has a bit of a sweetness to it. So first, I'm going to juice a lemon, okay? You can use just store-bought lemon juice, which is what I often do. <laughs> but today we will use fresh lemon. So we're gonna juice a lemon. You know what? I think we could use a full lemon. Let's do a full lemon. We want lots of flavor. Whew! What did I tell you? Filming day is arm day. <laughs> okay guys, so let's mix together our sauce. I'm kind of winging this as always. So we're gonna do, let's start with two tablespoons of tahini. And then I'm gonna do two tablespoons of the coconut aminos. Ooh, look at that. It's thick. Mm, delicious. The full lemon experience. So just mix this mix. You can also whisk it, it might mix it faster. But you know what, we got plenty of time. We're still cooking the wild rice. So let's just do a nice little, like, maybe half a tablespoon of garlic powder into our tahini mixture. And then we're gonna call it a day. We're doing, like, really easy, simple recipes. I don't want to give you guys too, too many ingredients to work with. You don't have to necessarily use the garlic powder, but it's there for you if you need. All right, guys, so the wild rice is done, it seems. Let me just... Nice and chewy. So wild rice is gonna be a lot chewier. And I think it's higher in protein, I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, there's the lovely mixture. Now all I'm gonna do, I had it sitting without the heat on for like five minutes. Now I'm just gonna turn the heat back on and then all I'm gonna do is add in our tahini dressing. <sighs> Look at that. So I'm just gonna mix that. And then I'm just going to add in like a nice big handful of spinach baby spinach. I'm just using maybe about two cups of baby spinach because because you got to have your vegetables guys, okay? You got to have your vegetables. Mix it in, allow the spinach to wilt. You can also use like kale for this, but you might have to cook the kale a bit. And then, I mean, that's pretty much it, but we're going to add a little touch at the end. All right, guys, so that's pretty much done. Let's just plate it nicely. Feel free to add other like veggies and stuff, whatever you want to add, totally optional, you know? That's totally up to you. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible today, so. Ooh la la. And now for the final touches. We're just gonna add some uh, cilantro. You can add like parsley, I don't know, add whatever you want. And then we're also gonna add just a little bit of green onion, of course. Okay, I'm just gonna give it a quick try. Let's get a nice mouthful. Mmm, I'm gonna do a little. All right, let's give this a try. Mmm! Hold up. I was not expecting so much flavor. That lemon just brings out so much flavor. Little hack, guys. Lemon is such a good flavor enhancer. You don't even need to add like too, too much like sodium because lemon just brings out the flavor. Oh my God, this is so good. So easy. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys, 
so recipe number three, we're gonna make a really easy, delicious pasta salad with a creamy dressing that is going to be very, very easy. So if you guys have watched some of my videos in the past, you may have seen this. I'm gonna make a creamy cashew dressing. And of course, the main ingredient, lovely cashews. Yes, I'm using these cashews right here. And the hardest part of this recipe is just waiting for the cashews to boil because you want to soften the cashews. So you want to throw these into some boiling water to allow them to soften and boil. And it's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes. And then you can blend it up with a few other ingredients and then that's going to make our delicious dressing. So let's boil these babies, okay? And of course, the second hardest part of this recipe is once again, boiling the pasta. I'm using this like kamut pasta. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but I think it's like supposed to be healthier or something. I don't really know fully, but it's whole grain and it's high in protein, high in fiber, all of those great things. Apparently no salt added, very good. So I'm gonna make the spirals. So I just have one serving right here ready to go. I'm just gonna throw this into some boiling water. All right, so we just did the hardest parts. <laughs> And it's gonna be really simple. I'm gonna keep it very very simple when it comes to the other ingredients All I want to do is chop some like purple cabbage and throw that in with some edamame and it's gonna be great So while that's boiling you can prepare your other ingredients, which I'm gonna keep again very simple We're gonna use some purple cabbage or red cabbage. Is this red? Is this purple? Let me know so I'm just gonna use like, I kinda wanna use like about what, maybe one cup. If you're like extra lazy, you can actually buy like coleslaw mix and that comes like pre-shredded, pre-chopped, but it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, I believe, than buying just regular old cabbage. Maybe this is like more than a cup. Maybe about a cup and a half, two cups, however much you want, really. All right, so the next very easy ingredient is going to be edamame beans, okay? Edamame beans, you guys know I love because they're so convenient. They just sit in my freezer. They're ready to go pretty much. You just have to thaw them or throw them into some boiling water, which I'm about to do. And I just love it. You don't have to open up a can. You don't have to like rinse it. It's just so simple and easy. And I love the taste of edamame beans. So yeah, highly recommend. You can of course use whatever plant-based protein of your choice for this, but I think edamame beans would go really well with this. So let's throw these into the pasta. So I like to actually throw them into the pasta when it's like almost done cooking just to let the edamame kind of just like thaw and like be ready to go. So that's what we're gonna do, okay? So pasta is done cooking. All I did was just rinse the pasta and the beans in cold water thoroughly so that it is nice and cold. And now I'm just gonna throw it into a big bowl. And then let's just throw in our uh, purple cabbage. And now guys, I believe the cashews are done with the softening process so we can make our sauce. All right guys, so to make the sauce, all you have to do is throw in the softened cashews into a blender. So we have the one cup of softened cashews and I also threw in some nutritional yeast, about three tablespoons of nutritional yeast. And then you also want to add some minced garlic. You can also just use uh, garlic powder if you want, but I threw in about a tablespoon of minced garlic. And then the next ingredient is going to be a vegetable bouillon cube or about one teaspoon of like a vegetable bouillon like paste or something. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna throw in a cube of veggie bouillon. If you want, you can add a little at a time and then add more as you go. And then the last ingredient is going to just be some water. I'm gonna do one cup of water. And that's it. You just blend this up and it becomes nice and creamy. Okay, so now we have the delicious and creamy cashew dressing. Can you see it? Mmm, I'm just gonna give it a little taste. Oh my God, it is so good. Like I just, four ingredients guys, four ingredients. And I make quite a bit, so you can actually save this and keep it in your fridge for a few days, throw it into pasta, throw it into this dish right here, do whatever you want. Um, this is a little bit warm, but um, that's fine. We can cool down the pasta salad later. So we're gonna start with adding maybe about a half a cup of this mixture. I would say this makes maybe about like three to four servings. So let's start with half a cup, okay? Ooh, ooh la la. I can't believe how simple it is. I still, every time I make it, I'm amazed. Okay, so we're gonna just mix this baby up. And 
that's gonna be our creamy pasta salad. You can add, of course, other vegetables as well. Maybe add some more color in there, maybe some carrots, like grated carrots. Oh my God. Add a little bit more dressing. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, so I do need to take some pictures, so that's why I'm just going to plate it nicely. But of course, you can just eat it straight out of the bowl, which is what I normally would do. And this is like one serving, but because I added lots of cabbage, it looks like a lot of food, so it's going to be quite filling as well. We got healthy fats in here, we've got some healthy plant-based protein, we've got some healthy carbs. I mean, this is a complete meal, if you ask me. Mm. So, last final little touch, some pepper, and of course you can add some salt if you need. All right, so of course I need to add some green onion because that's my special touch. You don't have to do this, but I just like it, okay? It's my thing. Leave me alone. Mmm. See, it just, just makes it better. And that's it guys, that's how you make it. Um, I'm gonna give it a taste because that's the best part of this job. I mean, I know it's gonna be good because the dressing is good, so let's give it a taste. Mm. Mm. There are no words. There are no words other than try this out the dressing will not disappoint okay it works well with warm pasta it works well with cold pasta it's so good okay just try it trust me trust me on this one definitely make this it is nice and crunchy it is nice and fresh it's so delicious and i yeah i said there were no words and i keep talking so that's it <laughs>so those were the spring recipes i'm so happy with how they all turned out they're all so easy and delicious i really hope you guys try these out because they're just full of flavor and so so good i can't really pick my favorite they're all so delicious in their own way so hopefully you guys try all of them out because they're so easy and simple anyways i just want to show you guys a few other items that i got from ire that are of interest to me i feel like a kid in a candy store when i shop on ire because they have so many like random little things and i'm like i want to get this i want to get this anyways so First thing that I kind of love <laughs> is this Annie's uh, vegan mac and cheese. Um, I've had this before, it is delicious. I'm just gonna eat it as a nice little, you know, treat at some point. It reminds me of Kraft Dinner. It's a vegan version. I like to add a little extra nutritional yeast on here and it's so good. And yeah, it's just really good and convenient. So I'm excited for this. Um, second thing I got was some almond flour. I want to try making um, some different recipes with almond flour. I know there's like some cookie recipes I want to try. So I'm just kind of excited to try out. Yeah, an almond flour recipe. They've got so many different types of flours, of course, on my So I'm excited to try this out. Maybe make some cookies and I'll keep you guys posted. And then another flour. We have brown rice flour. I just apparently bought a whole bunch of flours. So again, I want to make some different things with it. I actually made waffles with this in the morning and it was delicious. So I'm working on perfecting the recipe. Brown rice flour. There you go. I feel like rice flour has more of that kind of chewy, you know, starchiness than like regular flour. I feel like it's more like, what's the word? You guys know what I'm talking about? I don't know. Anyways, it's more starchy. It's more like chewy, delicious. So <laughs> brown rice flour, again, great if you're gluten-free. So that's what I got. And then I'm super excited for this, especially for the spring and the warmer weather, acai bowl mix, okay? So you can throw this into, it's basically like a powdered acai berry thing, and you can throw it into like smoothies. You can also make, of course, acai bowls with this. Um, they actually have the instructions in the back, so I might just try and follow this instructions and make my own delicious acai bowl. So yeah. All right, you guys. So that's pretty much it for my recipes and my little grocery haul from Ayer. Thank you so much to Ayer for sponsoring today's video. All of the information will be down below if you guys are interested in shopping at Ayer. Trust me, guys, you will love it. So check it out. Links are down below. And of course, all the recipes that I showed you today will also be in a written form in a blog post linked down below. So don't forget to check that out. Thank you so much once again for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.